Hey guys, it's Emily and in today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can add a sky overlay into a trickier skyline. And as I was getting ready to create this tutorial, I kind of noticed that most of my photos where I would add a sky, I think I purposely shoot where the horizon is going to be real straight and it's going to be real open because it can be tricky adding a skyline in if you have trees or bushes like to the side of this photo here or something else going on in the background or if your skyline isn't a perfectly straight horizon so on this one you also see we've got this mountain range going on in the back which makes it not a not perfectly straight so let me show you a couple tips and a couple tricks that you could do if you want to place a sky overlay onto a photo that's um, a little bit trickier so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to place a sky on top of my image and I'm going to go up to file, place embed, and then I'm going to select a sky from the Cozy Clicks Clouds and Rainbows pack. And I'm going to choose one that kind of goes with the, the color palette of the photo already. So I'm going to pick one of these pinkish purple skies and you don't have to have the Cozy Clicks pack. You can do this with uh, overlay you already have or one of your own and I'm just gonna resize the overlay and place it where I want it to go on my photo so that's the first thing that you want to do is just open and place it on and then move it where you want it to go and then I'm gonna double click now if this photo had just a straight horizon a really easy way that you can add in the sky overlay is to go and place a layer mask and then grab your gradient tool which is over here to the left make sure linear gradient is selected at the top and then you're just gonna drag up and that's gonna give a nice gradient that looks natural but what happens here is the clouds are still covering these trees here off to the side and it's also covering in these mountains because this is just a straight gradient and um, so it's a little trickier here okay so one way you could do is you could do this but on this one it's harder so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change the blend mode of the sky from normal to multiply and see what happens there now, a lot of times, and you can see on this one, it really took that overlay off the mountain and off of a lot of the bushes already. So sometimes simply choosing, uh, choosing a different blend mode, like multiply I really like, will help you do that. Now, the last thing that you can do if you've got some, a lot of trickiness going on is to double click in your sky. So not on the sky itself, not on the layer mask, but over here um, to the side where the words are, you're just gonna double click. And when you do that, you get a layer style menu that pops open. I want you to go down to where it says blend if and make sure gray is selected first. Then you're gonna go to the underlying layer and you're going to click on this black triangle here, or I guess dark gray triangle, and you're gonna move it over toward the right. And when you do that, you can start to see parts of the sky, and I'm moving this over a lot so you can really see the difference, but you can see it starts pulling it off parts of the background. You wanna play around with this because it's going to be a different number, a different amount for every photo. So for this one here, I'm gonna pull it over to about 51. And then if you want a little bit more, um, or you're not seeing the results you want, I want you to hit the Alt key and click, and that's gonna pull apart these two triangles, and you're just gonna bring them over toward the right a little bit here, okay? Let me bullet all the way over so you can just see the dramatic difference. But you can see it gives a nice gradient and it really starts pulling it off those areas that are more tricky. Now, if this still didn't work well on the picture, if with gray selected, it didn't give you the results you were hoping for, change the blend if color from gray to blue. And I want you to do the same thing with this underlying layer. So you're going to grab this dark gray triangle and just start dragging it over until you get the results you want. You can see it's kind of starting to pull it off there. So I'm going to bring it back down. And then if you want that little bit of extra, hit the Alt key, 
click at the same time and bring it over just a little bit. And that's gonna pull the colors off of your trees, off of the jagged horizon line. Um, the trick to this is you just gotta play around with it. So there's no magic numbers here that I'm telling you to use. It's gonna be different photo to photo. Then once you're done, you just click OK. Now on this guy overlay here, the background is blurrier than the clouds. So the last thing I'm going to do with this sky overlay selected is I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm just going to add a little bit of blur into those clouds to make it match my background. Okay, and that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to click OK. I can also adjust the opacity of this so it looks a little bit more natural, or I could keep it up um, at full opacity if I wanted a really dramatic look. So I'm just going to drop that down just a little bit, maybe to 86%. And that's how you add in a sky overlay to a tricky skyline. Now, if you'd like to check out these overlays, you can by going to cozyclicks.com forward slash rainbows. And if you would like to see more tutorials, this clouds and rainbows pack, as well as many, many, many of my full tutorials are available inside the Cozy Clicks Ultimate Pro Editing Membership. So if you want to check that out, you can by going to cozyclicks.com forward slash membership. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped you out with your tricky skyline and I will see you next time.